mobilization. That will be the first mobilization that we were going to do. Now, instead of explaining more about that, I will want you to try it, and I want you to try to feel it. Right. So, uh, come on to lie on your side, please, on this side facing away. Okay. Yeah, thank you. You can now bend your knees more. Good. And let's have this in between. Good. So, think about that. This is the scapula. Let's name a few muscles that attach into that scapula. Which muscle attach from the scapula to the, mu to the spine? Rhomboids. And another one, trapezius. Good. There is a muscles attached from here to the skull. Scalings and trapezius. Yeah. A muscle that attached uh, from actually here, big one, latissimus dorsi. Yeah, and there is the deltoid muscle, yeah, and there is the, the two muscles here start with a T, teres minor and major, yeah. So the, the scapula actually is a bone that has lots of muscles attachment. Now, if I start moving it, what I can do is start stretching this muscle into different position. Yeah. Now I stretch, for example, the trapezius muscle. Now, working with mobilizing the shoulder, it's actually not so much the, the shoulder, but more muscles. You, you teach that area to move nicely, relaxed. You, um, you relax the person. Yeah, it's not much about the shoulder joint. Well, this is not very um, effective, yeah? Come on to your back, please. So, lift your leg for a second, thank you. So, before actually teaching you how to do it, I want you to just experimenting in moving it. So, I want you to actually lax the muscle. Now I lax the upper trapezius. Do you understand what I'm saying, laxing it? Yeah. I'm making it shorter. It's like taking a towel and just shortening it and laxing, laxing it, so blood circulation will improve then. So I would lax it, and then I will stretch it. So, lax it and stretch it, or move it all the way. If I do that, kind of, mm, I don't see really the reason for it, but if you do it completely, laxing, stretching it and leave it stretched. Even put this hand and stretching this muscle, stretching the upper trapezius, that would be good. Could you please turn your head this way? Yeah. When you turn the head, the stretch would be even further. Yeah. Does it feel good? How does it feel? Yeah, stretching. Feel like stretching. Good, good. Okay. <laughs> now, what I'll do after that is teach you, once you're controlling it, is actually showing you that the, the bottom line of mobilization is actually massage while you're mobilizing. So really, is mobilizing together with this hand really doing petrissage or tractioning or, or compression. So you're supporting the... So I'm supporting joints. it and I'll show you how, but I want you to just feel that. Do you feel the difference now? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, what I do, if I can take this uh, towel, yes. Uh, what I'm what I'm doing now is, if this is the muscle, I'm laxing it and stretching it, laxing it and stretching it. This is mobilization. What I do also, hold it in a second here. I do that, and then massaging together with. And what happens is that you improving the massage. And it's not that much of mobilization. It's more the muscle work that you do with. Okay? So that's just where we're going to. What I would like you now to practice is, is the hold. The hold. So I want you to hold it in three places. One over here. Two over there. And three your hand there. Now. I want you to take the shoulder only downward and upward toward the ear. And I want you to feel if you're stretching it and if you're laxing it. 
that's all. Don't move it around, just upward and stretching downward. And then try with the head turn, and then stretch it down and up. Down and up. If you feel better with, then start massaging while you're doing it. Okay? That's it, really. Can you do that same move if she's flipped over the other way? So facing down? Yeah. Yes. Let's face down for a second. But it's a lot harder, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> It's a lot harder, and so I tell you why. Just you tend to do back massages more than happens. Yeah, front. I tell you why. Because when you do that, it's not yeah. comfortable. Yeah. So what you need to do is really to drop it, yeah, very little, and then you do it with your hand dragging on the massage table. Well, that's what you do. It's very minimalistic stretching. Compress it. Don't lift it. And, and then the other hands just do that massage. Okay. It's kind of re-education for the muscle to relax when you're stretching and relaxing, stretching and relaxing. What's yeah. the difference feel like? Um, this is, I find this more sore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's more yeah. onto yeah. the back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so don't do that. Oh, it's comfortable for me. They're not comfortable. <laughs> yeah. So you need to actually do that. There are many other ways you can put your hands on, the, on your head, on your leg, like that. But the bottom line is that you cannot twist their body. Mm -hmm. So really drop it. And you just do that. Is it more so? No, no, no it's fine. When you do yeah. the it will be well. sore in here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So let's pay attention to this upper trapezius muscle. is habitually tense on most people. Mm -hmm. You can massage it when it's static. But if you start massaging when it's relaxed or stretched, you re-educate the nervous system to actually let go more. It's a challenge for the nervous system. Why? Because they want to start helping you. You have to say stop and relax. Okay? Can we do that only facing up? Yes. Very simple. Okay? Are we doing it over the clothes? Over clothes, yes. Let's make it simple. Over here, yeah? Now, if you take that above, you can actually do. Uh, um, mobilization to the shoulder in a position that we haven't, you, you're not doing much in real life. And it's kind of interesting because think about that. Most of what we're doing is sort of like above the, hor the horizon, ho horizontal line, yeah? Kind of yeah, computer, telephone, writing, yeah? Mm -hmm. All is in desks around. And uh, I don't know where we forgot these banana trees that we used to like, you know, going there and stretching the side and then trying to lift ourselves and hanging mm -hmm. there. What happened in this position is that the kyphosis were all in, sort of like diminished. Yeah, do you see that? Mm -hmm. So it's part of the same archetype of movement of that versus that. that. So it kind of helped, okay? So now um, you can take the hand, the arm, from here and move, yeah? and then stretch from here. And I will show you two ways. If you want to maybe swing around to the other side, actually, why don't we do the opposite? I'll change the hand. <laughs> it will be a lot easier, OK? So I can do it from here. You know, Start with what we did so far, coming slowly. And then I can still do the upper trapezius here. Yeah, maybe the camera can come actually from that. It would be a lot easier. Yeah. So I'm still in here, and what I'm doing again is this area on the upper trapezius, but then stretching it, stretching it this way, stretching it that way. Yeah, and again working on that, stretching it, and then bringing it lax. 
upward, a little bit downward, <coughs> a little bit upward. Yeah? So this is one. Actually, this one I don't use much. I use the opposite one. I do it on the opposite hand. So now I have the, the other hand more on the ribs. And what I'm doing now is actually doing some ribs mobilization with it. On the side here. So again, it's the same seesaw, yes? In and pushing out. In and pushing out. Sorry? Could you do the hip with that? Yes, you can do the hip. Stretching the whole side. You can do the um, quadratus lumbarum if you are big enough, yes, if you are tall enough. Ribs. How does that feel, Sam? Nice. Yeah? Uh, but it's kind of area that you never massage. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of people that the middle thoracic spine is kind of rigid. So, you know, you're moving that to the side, stretching here, and stretching, or just stretching. Now, be careful if someone cannot take the arm more down to force it. If you work on elderly people and all they can do comfortably is up to here, you leave it there. You don't force it. You cannot force it. You, you mobilize it in the barrier it has, into the limitation it has, yeah? You can do even the lower sternum this way, yeah? So again, you do it with, with an approach of the neck. So you can do the upper trapezius here and stretching. But because it's up, it's kind of limited. You cannot take it down. Does it feel good downward? It, it feels all right, but mm -hmm. be much, much, much better when you stretch when it. When you stretch it. Be careful. In this position, you can take it up and down. In this position, <clears throat> it's a lot more vulnerable to take it down. Yeah. So I would say it's mostly tractioning it upward. You can work nicely on the deltoids. You know, there are so many things you can do. Deltoid, really amazing. You know, how about triceps? You know, it's really come to you. If with oil, you can do nice, nice tripping in here. Yeah? But really, the majority of uh, uh, opportunities are the ribs on the side. Scoliosis, people with asthma, or respiratory problems when the rigidity would be in the thoracic spine. People with kyphosis. Shall we, uh, do, you, do you want me to show again or? It's okay? So the question always would be, which shoulder should I put it, here or here? Mm -hmm. Well, try it and see. Okay? Um, and let's see more of the modification for the um, mobilization technique. First of all, just to be sure, we're having the tea towel, so longitudinal around, and imagine that there is another towel here, mm -hmm. you would do all the towel technique, etc. Okay? So now, how do you actually um, handling that moving the body around, yes? So first of all, what you can do is take the arm, moving it, so a clean way, rather than putting the towel out and then, <laughs> yeah, so avoid it really. So again, and the same thing apply when you are lying, uh, when you're turning it, yes, when, when you're returning. So lift it, take the hand, round the towel and leave it this way okay so now let's see if you do the mobilization without oil sometimes it's a lot easier because there is no um, it, it's not gliding or sticking so try to do that as much as you can with 
without oil. But let's say that you want to have oil, then is it okay to do it in this one? Probably would I have oil if it stopped? Yes, you want to. Yeah, only one. One, only yeah. One. yeah, one is enough. Okay. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> you probably would have oil already if you start doing other yeah. things. Like so let's say that we have one. oil. Yeah. Let's say that we have oil. We can do even the neck and shoulder. So let's say that this area is kind of oily. So um, you hold it the same way, but now you have to be careful that you're not gliding on the, on the arm. So hold it kind of tight. At times, if there is a lot of oil, anyone has a small towel? I'll show you what I do in clinic. Okay. No small towel? Yeah. Maybe I'll take this towel. Let's say that this is a small towel, and I have in clinic all sort of a size of, of towels. So what you do is basically draping the arm, and then you're holding it so you're not gliding on it. And it's kind of very nice and supportive to that area, okay? So you turn the head to the side, and then you start doing that dragging up, down, stretching it, and finding where is the tight area. Rather than work really hard, work slow, but more focus. So less energy and more focus. So finding that, and then stay, and then stretching, and then bringing into laxity. If you want, another stretch would be to put your hand against that, and then you stretch the lower, you're actually stretching away from that. You can use a little bit of push of your arm, but try to limit it. Now, the stretch is more mild and long. Don't try to do it sharp and strong, so very mild and long. The stronger you do it, the muscles would contract and against it. Yeah? Good. Now I can go a little <coughs> bit onto the neck even. So, remember the knuckles, or, sorry, the up, uh, suboccipital area? Mm -hmm. So you can use your finger head. You can use your knuckles here. Yeah. But really, spend the time that you're mobilizing, really mobilizing. So if you can do the knuckles this way, don't have your hair hands held there for nothing, but really move it. Okay? So I'll take this aside, we don't do that. So another technique that I can do, and I need to be quite low because I like to use the weight of the, um, of the uh, table. So I'm actually leaning completely my forearms all the way onto here, and then I use the knuckles. Or I use it here, underneath. So it may look acrobatic, but actually kind of very easy for me. If I wouldn't do that, I would need to do it in kind of 40 position. So really long launch, and all the forearm, all my weight is actually on the table. And then I move it. Then you can do even further. You can bring her, your body into here. And then, again, knuckles. I use a lot of knuckles. Maybe the camera can come a little bit closer and see, actually, that I use knuckles in here and that my wrist is on the table. And it's very easy to do and quite effective. And then stretch it. Stretch means arm upward, yeah? And probably that's then after use different technique, bringing into effleurage, 
or doing petrosage again in this area. If you want a very easy mobilization, a mini mobilization, you put your hand and you're just pushing their elbow. Yeah. So you can do that. All you need really is the upper trapezius go up and down in a, in a relaxed way. That's all. So that would suit it. Yeah. And then stretch it in here. Then down. Yeah. <clears throat> Another very good mobilization that's kind of hard to show is to, to thug to actually hold their spine. Now, if um, imagine that this is their spine and they're lying down, so I'm coming from underneath it onto the other side and push it this way. That's what I'm doing to the spine. So, how it would look like. Thank you. you just come into here, you lift the shoulder a little bit onto the other side so your hands goes about underneath and I do that movement to the spine. It's very little, don't worry, the spine is not gonna break. But you do it onto the upper back, not onto the neck. Again, I'm not lifting myself, but I use the momentum from the table. So actually kind of heavy wrist and forearm on the table almost and then moving it. It's very small, but um, very good. You know, try that and it releases a lot of the tension here. So you work also on a little bit the thoracic erector spiny muscle, but also on the spine itself. I'm actually on the bone. You're not going to break it, don't worry, really. Thoracic area. Yeah, thoracic yeah. area. Only the thoracic area. We're not going to do the neck and shoulder and the, and the lower back. Yeah, I mean, further down. Oh, more yeah. down? More yeah. down, yeah. Can you? Yes, you can. Can you? you? Can. Yeah. It's like mobilization. Yes, sorry. you can, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do. Yeah, But I would suggest more closer to the neck for now. Now, at the beginning, it's kind of, where is the spine, actually? You have to find the spine, but, you know, I'll come and help you, each one of you. Yeah? So, again, more knuckles, massage with, and see how is it when it's um, more lubricated from oil, and how you can maybe, with the aid of another towel, to support it, and then use more of the forearm on the table and knuckle, and see what is your uh, position repercussion should be, not to break the, mo the line so your wrist is kind of straight, you know? I can do this technique this way, but I prefer to do it this way, because I want the line between the wrist and the forearm to be straight and uh, protected, yeah? Any question? <clears throat> When it comes to the spine, call me, I'll come and help you to find it. It's there. <laughs> <laughs>